Hello and welcome back to Scouching's 2019 NHL Draft Recaps. Today we're looking at the Nashville Predators, and the Predators certainly had themselves a day. They traded P.K. Subban for not very much to save some cap money, which is fine, but they did end up with a second round pick that they did use to trade down and draft an interesting player. So let's get into exactly who they got in their draft crop. Leading the way was Philip Tomasino, who was a player at 24 I think was good value. I was more and more impressed with Tomasino the more I watched. I think he could be a really solid and dependable two-way center with some nice offensive touches to him. He's a good skater, he's got good skill, he's responsible in all areas of the ice, and I think for a young center, that's really all you can ask for. I think the Predators can afford to be patient with him, and at the end of the day, I think they have an interesting player here. They then used the second round pick they got in that P.K. Subban deal to trade down and draft Igor Afanasyev. And at 45, I think this is a really good pick. I really like Afanasyev's projectability as a potential NHL power winger one day. He's got good skill, he's a big, strong, powerful skater. And I think there's an interesting player here one day if they can be patient with him and let him develop in college for a few years. He will need some time to refine the final minor points of the game and I did find him disappearing a little bit in the games that I saw and his first half was much much better than his second half but what I did see was a very interesting skilled power forward and there might be an interesting NHL contributor here for Nashville. At 65 the Predators took Alex Campbell who was a line mate of Alex Newhook's and honestly I don't think Newhook would have had the season that he had without Alex Campbell there as well. Campbell is a really slippery offensive player who I came away really impressed with in brief flashes. There were some games he was a little bit invisible but when he was at his best he was fantastic to watch he's a lot of fun and i think that over time he could develop into a very very good piece for the nashville predators if you're patient and he can capture his game when it's at its best more often at 109 they took mark del Gaizo, and i'll admit i was impressed whenever i caught him playing with kale mccarr I personally wouldn't have drafted him at 109 unless I was certainly sure of his upside, especially since he was playing with such a talented pair mate. He is a bit undersized, but I do like his puck skill, he's got a good shot from the point, his offensive tools are nice. I would have just wanted to see what he's like without Kale McCarr. It'll be interesting to see how he plays without him over the next year or two before Nashville decides on if they want to bring him into the system. I think he's got nice tools, again it just comes down to how good is he without Kale McCarr there with him. At 117 they took one of my favorite players to watch in the whole draft, Semyon Chistikov. He's a great skating defenseman and he was playing in the MHL which is really tough to judge but I came away more and more impressed with him the more I watched. His skating is great and the Predators seem to love drafting guys who base themselves on their skating primarily. David Ference is one, Frederick Ayard is another one, and they've added another really smooth skating defenseman in Semyon Chistikov. Their next pick was goaltender Ethan Hayter, and usually I don't throw goaltenders under the bus because they're goaltenders and who knows what's going to happen, and Ethan Hayter is very young for the draft class, but when you look at all the goaltenders that went off the board, his numbers are a little bit spotty. I mean, I'm not going to complain because this is not a first or a second or a third round pick used on a goaltender who doesn't stop a lot of pucks, and if you like him, you like him. This is just a pick that I thought there might have been more interesting swings the Predators could have took, especially at the goaltending position. So we'll see where he ends up, but I'm not going to really judge this pick too much. Then at 179 and 210th, the Predators took two players that I really haven't seen a whole lot of and can't really judge a whole bunch. Isaac Walter played most of this season at the under-18 level in Sweden, so who knows where that goes. And Parsonen, I never came away super impressed, whether it was at the under-20 level in Finland or at the under-18 tournament this year. Just not really sure where he goes from here, but I guess the Predators see something they like. So if you've watched scouting reports before, we're using the same rating system for this video to summarize a team's picks. The number is going to indicate the overall potential I see out of the draft class for the team, and the letter is going to indicate the likelihood of reaching that potential as a whole. And with the Nashville Predators, P.K. Subban trade, aside, I think they had a pretty decent draft here. I'm going to give them a 2B. I really like Philip Tomasino's projectability as a middle six center in the NHL one day. Guys like Igor Afanasyev and Alex Campbell are really interesting bets. They have a lot of skill, and they certainly put up the production that you would expect for an NHL draft pick. And Semyon Chistikov and Mark Del Gaizo certainly have very, very interesting tools that fit in perfectly with Nashville's system. So it'll be very interesting to see where these guys end up. So that's all for the Nashville Predators. Our next subject is going to be the Montreal Canadiens. If you liked the video, you could click all the buttons you see below me so you never miss a thing. If you really liked it, you could support us on Patreon, where you get access to spreadsheets for drafted and undrafted prospects, as well as plenty of other goodies, including private chat rooms and merchandise discounts. Or you could pick up some merchandise from the Scouchware shop. All the links are in the description below. So that's all, and I hope you join me for the video where we break down the Montreal Canadiens.